Hey, let's do our first trigonometric substitution problem. The first thing that you want to notice is that our other techniques aren't going to work. If you can do another technique, you're probably going to want to. The first thing you might look at is that a u substitution. You'll notice that if we choose u is 4 minus x squared, our du has an x dx in it, and we don't have an x dx available in our integral. So this is not going to work out. So we'll move this out of the way. We might also try maybe an integration by parts. Messing around with the integration by parts for a little while is going to show you that is not going to work out so well either. But there's a tip off in this problem that might suggest that a trigonometric substitution or a trig sub is going to work in this problem. The tip off is that one of these three forms that I've written down over here is somewhere in the integrand. More specifically, you'll notice that this 4 minus x squared is an a squared minus x squared with a equals 2. So our integral involves this term. Therefore, we are going to try to use this trigonometric substitution right here. And let me get rid of all of this other junk. Since we notice that we have a equals 2 in this problem, we're going to try to use the substitution x equals 2 sine of theta. And we can give a bunch of information about this right off the bat. One thing that we can say is that dx is going to be 2 cosine of theta d theta. Another thing that we can say is that x over 2 equals sine of theta. So if we wanted to draw a picture of what theta looked like, we might put it into a right triangle because we know if we call this angle right here theta, that the sine of that angle is the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Doing a quick Pythagorean theorem problem would tell us that this side over here would be 4 minus minus x squared. Okay, so that's good. We might use that in this problem. And as if I haven't given you enough preliminary information before we even start solving this problem, I will tell you one more thing that we might use. This equation right here can be solved for theta if we take the inverse sine of both sides of that equation. In other words, theta can be written as the inverse sine of x over 2. Okay, so what are we going to use in this problem? Well, we're probably going to use this. We might end up using this triangle right here. It's called a reference triangle. And we are definitely going to use this dx right here. Okay, let's go back and take a look at the original problem. Let's plug this substitution, x equals 2 sine of theta in right here, and let's plug our dx in right here. Now let's do a little bit of simplification. Squaring 2 sine of theta gives us 4 sine squared theta. Knowing a few things about trig functions suggests that if we pull a 4 out of these two terms in the denominator, we're going to get this 1 minus sine squared term right here, and we know that 1 minus sine squared theta is the same thing as cosine squared theta. Now this simplification is looking even better because if we take the square root of 4, we get 2. And if we take the square root of cosine squared, we get cosine. Well, okay, technically we get the absolute value of cosine. Later on in this section, we might have to investigate where is the cosine of theta positive and where is it negative. We might have to do some things with this absolute value of cosine. But right now, this is an indefinite integral and we want to continue on with this problem. So we're just going to assume that the cosine of theta is already positive. We're going to get rid of those absolute values. And then we get to cancel the 2 cosine theta in the numerator with the 2 cosine theta in the denominator. That gives us the integral of d theta. Integrating that with respect to theta gives us theta. Well, remember when I told you all that stuff at the beginning of this problem that maybe didn't even have anything to do with this problem? This is where it comes in handy. We got an answer to our integral that involved theta down here. But our integral started with the variable x. So we want our final answer to only have x's in it and not thetas. What we do to get rid of our theta is we will either use this reference triangle up here or we'll use this piece of information that I wrote right here. The fact that theta equals the inverse sine of x over 2 actually gives us our final answer. We can tack a plus c on that thing and we are good to go. I'm going to zoom out on this and remind you that you probably have learned what the value of this original integral was. At some point in calculus 1, you may have done some derivation or you may have just been told to memorize this inverse trig integral. Well, we just found this result another way. This time we used a trigonometric substitution or a trig sub. And I think we should try another trig sub in the next video. I will see you there.